how to make offers super quick, super fast, and super efficient. What is up guys, Zach in here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you my complete guide on how to stop overcomplicating things, stop overcomping things, that's the way I, I kinda see it, and really exactly how you can actually start making offers, getting wholesaling deals, by just getting destroyed by the analysis paralysis and overthinking everything and just getting into it. You know, I feel like one big superpower I do have in wholesaling real estate is when I talk to a seller, I make the offer super quick. I say it with super confidence. I say it with super emotion and I see it and I do it with the most important thing, which I truly believe, which is super speed. And in this video, what I really want to do is show you how I implement speed in my wholesaling real estate business when talking to motivate sellers and how you can do the same thing for wholesaling real estate success. So I'm excited. I'm jacked up. I'm ready to go because I'm going to show you exactly how to do this today and how you can stop overcomplicating things. But before we get into it, guys, do me a favor. Make sure you go out here and hit that like button. All right. Smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button and always comment below your questions. And I want to help you become the best wholesaler possible. So you might be asking yourself, like, where's the studio? What happened to everything? Well, I uh, kind of said it in the announcement today. I am in Miami. Um, kind of put the lights. You see the lights behind me. Uh, that is the famous uh, Miami, uh, I think, Overseas Highway. It's where all the movies are. But uh, that's South Beach right there. I'm on Miami. We're on the water. We got a really nice hotel tonight. And uh, just chilling in Miami for, uh, for about a week. So uh, pretty fun, pretty cool. Uh, exciting that wholesaling real estate um, affords me this opportunity to do this. And uh, it allows me, you know, not much to do right now. So I'm uh, going to live stream with you guys. You know, I tell you I'm traveling everywhere, but. And uh, it allows up me. Up there. All right. Audio is all good. So, yeah, uh, I'm in Miami. So, uh, we know, no technical difficulties today. But uh, what I'm going to do is just show you how you can do it the right way and uh, get it going. So, without further ado, let's talk about this. Let's get into doing offers the quick, fast, efficient, and pretty much the best way to go out here and do deals. So, uh, the first thing we got to understand is, I truly believe, but the regular offer formula, the regular offer formula people have been getting, you know, and I think sometimes I'm a little guilty of this too, but I, I think the average offer people get in wholesaling real estate is just too complicated. There, there's too much analysis. There's too much calculating. They got the abacus. They got the crazy uh, analysis systems. And, and they honestly, they just go crazy with it, right? They spend hours and hours and hours getting the perfect comp. I see people doing comps before they even cold call a seller and, the, and they spent like 20 minutes comping the property and the seller just says, no, I don't want to sell the property at all. And it, it's, it's messed up. So first of all, I think everyone should go to freelisting.com. That's first and foremost. But in my honest opinion, I truly believe that the offer formula is causing too many issues. Uh, there's too many people on the internet uh, saying their opinions on what an offer formula should be and what it shouldn't be. And obviously we give our offer formula Really, frankly, um, if you're going to do a legit offer formula, you do it the nice, proper, uh, pristine way. Um, I, I truly believe it probably takes five minutes. I, I think five minutes tops on an offer. You look through comps, ARV repairs, and we show you. You know, we got the repair cost worksheet. We got the little chart for you. Like we have it all for you at freelancing.com. But if you really want to get into an even better way, a more efficient way, so you can actually do this in under two minutes and. Really, you don't have to spend so much time thinking and, and going crazy and trying to get everything perfect. This might be the perfect solution for you. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. And uh, that's what we're going to get into. So the first thing we got to understand here is we need to simplify the entire process. I, I truly believe this entire real estate uh, offer process is just too much, right? We, we need what we call the instant offer formula, uh, the offer instant uh, analysis thing. I don't know what you call it, right? But if you can instantly just make offers with sellers and just do it quick like that, that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to simplify the process, make it simple, make it easy, and we can do it like that, right? And these aren't Zillow for sub buyers. These are just regular properties you can do. And it's it sounds so simple, but like, look what I'm saying here. It's like simplify the entire process. By simplifying the entire process, you get back to the basics. And like an old basketball coach when he says, back to the basics, right? You get back to actually what's working in this business. And what truly works in wholesaling real estate is the things that the successful people do versus the ones that they don't do. And people that are successful tend to make more offers to sellers. 
they usually make up lower than the average person, right? And if you just use those simple formulas and do what simply has been working and do it to your own wholesaling business, you'll end up being successful. So first and foremost, simplify the entire process. Next here, I truly believe that most wholesalers, they don't get the best lowball price out of the seller. And I'm looking at you right now. I, I, I truly don't believe most wholesalers get the lowest price they possibly have to get with a motivated seller. I always feel like there's always, you know, an extra five, 10, 15 grand. And if you're watching this and you've done a wholesaling deal, you probably know what I'm talking about. You've probably could have squeezed an extra couple K uh, or thousand dollars, a couple thousand grand out of a deal, but you just, you ended up, didn't want to do it, right? You thought you were a little too scared to make that offer. It was just too much work to do that one offer. But in all honesty, it, you probably could have gotten more if you just lowballed better, right? And I truly believe so many wholesalers have this, and this is another problem I'm just trying to address here. You know, I think this is a huge thing people have, and uh, working on it really hard today. And so let's get into it, and let's talk about it. So first and foremost, you need to push it to the limit, right? We're in Miami right here, and the one thing about Miami, which I love, is pretty much all Scarface was pretty much done in Miami. And uh, they had the whole scenic scenes and everything, but uh, they had the song Push It to the Limit. I love that song. It's, it's a great song. Push it to the limit, right? And they got the whole, they got the whole montage, right? And, and you know, you got Tony Montana going nuts. You know, say hello, my little friend. It wasn't in that in the montage, but he's living life, right? He's pushing it to the limit. And while I was out here, I was kind of thinking about it, but like, guys, you need to push your offers to the limit. Push it to the limit. Like, seriously, push it to the limit. And if you haven't seen Scarface, go go watch Scarface. Amazing movie, right? But I truly believe you guys need to push your offers to the limit. And what the limit are we talking about, right? Most people think when you say push to the limit, you're pushing the limit up. But really, you need to push the limit down. Like the limits of how low you can go, how low that seller can accept that offer. And once you learn it, the lower the offer you get, statistically, the lower the contract. Now, obviously, if you lowball the wrong way or you don't do the right way, you're obviously not going to be successful at it. But you need to push these offers to the limit, the lowest possible pr price in the lowest possible way. So two ways I found really quick, really simple, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, two minutes to do. But first and foremost, if you have a really good cash buyers list and you have good cash buyers, you theoretically can ask your cash buyer like, hey, Mr. Cash Buyer, what roughly would you do on this property? I, I literally don't know the comps or right? this is a property. And they might say, hey, I'll probably buy this around 120 if the repair is not terrible. Guess what? If you know it's 120, you just go out here and you minus off whatever that 120 is from the contract price and make a profit. So let's say, for example, you know 120 is the cash buyer will buy it for. Why don't we offer to buy the thing for 100? 100 minus 120, that's $28,000 difference. Boom, that's the money, right? And so once we start playing that game, we know we can make a ton of money. So whatever the contract price is, Minus what the buyer can pay for it. That's how much money you're making. Making five grand, four grand, three grand, whatever it really is, you'll be successful at it. Uh, it's really not that complicated, right? And then you just give them a lowball offer from there, right? Or, I mean, you know this too. You can just do a lowball offer and just see what a cash buyer is willing to pay for it after you lock it up. Uh, I, I really wouldn't complicate it too much from there. Uh, but really, that's honestly what I found. So we're talking about lowballing a lot, right? And again, a lot of people are like, oh, so, it's like, you know, you say the word lowballing, right? You say it a lot, but like, why don't you actually tell me what it is? And duh, that's specifically what I'm doing right now. I'm going to show you how to lowball motivated sellers. And so really, I think there's about three main ways to lowball a motivated seller. And if you know how to lowball a motivated seller, it's very difficult to get contracts for too high. And most people who actually follow me, they go to freelancing.com they know how to lowball the seller, but sometimes they don't want to do what it takes to lowball the motivated seller. So for example, let me show you. So the first one is one of my favorite ones. It is called the good cop, bad cop method. Now the good cop, bad cop method is basically a method, method of talking to a motivated seller and having your partner as the bad cop, that the bad person is transaction, the, the evil person uh, that's actually going to go out here and try to get the most that is trying to go out here and lowball you, and they want to get it for the cheapest property, pro, cheapest price possible. And there's terrible, bad, 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 bad. And then you are the nice guy. You're the good cop. You're, you're the sweet guy trying to buy it for the highest. 
And, you know, you got to work against the bad cop. And when you play that little game, you do really well. So, for example, you go to fearlessing.com. It's all in there. But basically, when I talk to a motivated seller and we get to the price negotiations, I kind of throw the price out there. I blame it on the partner, but I just throw that number out there. There's usually, when you go on an appointment, there's a lot of tension on what the offer is going to be and how is this all working. But really what I've personally found is if you go to the seller, it's like, hey, you know, I was talking to my partner, Rick, on this, and he was talking about to the property about me, and we texted, and he said he wanted to buy the property for like $130,000. That's what he told me. And you just see what the seller's reaction. Now, either the seller's going to say, okay, I mean, th that might work, or they're going to say, oh my gosh, that's way too high. I would never do that. Oh my gosh, I'm never doing that. That is way too crazy of a price. Get out of here, right? And they're super aggressive. And in all, in all honesty, like, what if they say, kick you out of the house, say, hey, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Rick's crazy. He always wants to buy the property for the biggest possible price. And I, I, I get it. He wants to buy it for the biggest discount. And, and he's nuts. I, on the other hand, I want to help you out. I mean, okay. So, yes, he's at 130. I mean, what, what works for you? He's at 130. Obviously, it seems like you're not going to take that. Is there any compromise? We can see how we can work it out here. And you go from there. Now, if you go here and say, oh, I'm gonna, Mr. So, I'm going to buy your house for $130,000. That's the price I'm at. And the guy kicks you out. It's like, I can't blame somebody else. And so if he kicks me out, I'm kind of kicked out and I lose the wholesaling deal. That's the big difference between the amateur wholesaler that doesn't know these methods and this good wholesaler that does it. And obviously, it's taught for free at freehosting.com. Now, the next one, something Rick really likes, it is called the volley or what we call the price first method. Uh, price first method is not a bad one. You just try to get the price out of the seller first. You kind of do a little volley. Uh, so basically, it's like, you know, playing volleyball. So it's like, hey, Mr. Seller, what price would you sell the property for? I mean, what, what works for you? And they're like, oh, I have no idea. Well, so if you did know in a perfect world, what would it be? Well, I know if you don't know, but just think of a price and let me know it works. You can go back and forth. You can do like the dollar bill method. Like, I mean, Mr. Shelley, would you be okay if I bought the property for like a dollar? And obviously not going to take a dollar for the property. And, you know, they're like, ah, oh, no, I never take that, right? Oh, okay, well, if you want to take a dollar, then... You will, you'll probably take a million dollars, obviously. So there's, there's a price in between that will work for you. And then you get it from there. Or they give you, give you their offer price first and negotiate from there. That always works, right? Uh, and then the last, the third part of lowballing, the, the last lowball method I have found is what we call the lowball with a reason. And what is the lowball with a reason? Basically, what the lowball with a reason is, is basically you just lowball the seller, but you give a reason with it. It's better than the standard lowball pitch. It's, I, it's as good as the volley method, I would say. But you lowball the seller, but you give a reasoning for it. And because you give a reasoning for it, the seller is less inclined to be mad at you. And so what I mean by that is you talk to the motivated seller and you're like, hey, Mr. Seller, looking at this, you know, because it needs new flooring, because I need to put a roof on it. There's molds on the ceilings. I know it's in the ducts. Because <sighs> of all this work, I'm just trying to do the math. I mean, it's probably going to cost me fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 to renovate this, me and my crew. I'm probably going to be around $130,000 to buy this. See, I'll go blank after I said that. Like, duh. Like, th that's low ball through. Now, I think good cop, bad cop's better. I've had better success with this method over the volley and price first, but sometimes when you give the volley price first, it does do better. I call it the third best one, and then obviously the worst one, just the standard. Mr. Schiller, I can do $130,000, right? Uh, right. Human beings are inherently interesting. And what I mean by that is if you give us a reason, we'll take it. So like you, you kind of look at star stores and stuff. So if somebody's selling something for 100 bucks, it's like, hmm do I really want to spend a hundred dollars on this t-shirt and maybe it has like a cool tiger on it? I don't know, whatever. Like people like their Gucci's, whatever. But if they said the shirt usually sells for 500 bucks, but we're only selling it for a hundred dollars for the next 10 hours. Oh my gosh, I gotta get the shirt. Oh, right, right. And they go crazy. Did the value of the shirt go up or down? Like what is value to what someone's willing to do? But inherently human beings are weird. They obviously, they feel the scarcity in the air and they go after and take it. Same thing with the lowballing with a reason. If you give some logical explanation why you got to do something, human beings are more inclined to take that. So logically, because I got to do all this stuff, I'm more inclined to take your offer. If I don't throw any logic with that and I just throw it out there, it doesn't work. 
And so that's basically what the low ball through reason does. It works well. You, you just got to understand how to do it the right way. And then really before you low ball and before you even come up with the offer, and this is the thing where we get rid of the no comps needed and the no A rate. Like I, I'm not, I'm not throwing smoke out here to make you feel like, oh, you're legit. Because I'm telling you, you legit don't need to give offers. You don't need to do comps by just asking yourself this one question before you lowball. And this will make sure you have the lowest lowball price and you'll squeeze the most out of the deal where you might make an extra 15K a deal. And if you do a deal a month, you'll probably end up making, what, like $180,000 more, maybe even $200,000 more per year by just doing this. And you just got to ask yourself this one question. And this is a question that requires no ARVs, no comps, no calculators. Most wholesaling gurus hate that I even mention this because they, they, they can't you know make it big secret. And I, I always give this out to everybody. But ask yourself this question before you give an offer to a seller. Did I go for no? Think about that for a second. Yeah, ask yourself like, hey, when I talk to this motivated seller, did I go for no? Did I go for the no? And Really, like, that's it. When you're doing a lowball offer, you have to go for the no. And I know it's uh, cringy to say for some people, or, you know, roll your eyes. But, like, really, d did you go for the lowest possible price? And if you go make offers to motivated sellers and you go and give an offer to them and you're expecting the no, you're hoping for the no, you gave that offer because you know it's going to go for the no. You know they're going to say no, they're going to reject it. That's the point. That's what we want to do in this business. We, we want to go for that instant no from the seller. And when you get that no from the seller, that eh, that's how you know you pushed it to the limit, Miami style, you know? And so go for the no. We've talked about, there's a book called Go For The No. That's kind of how we came up with that method uh, for wholesaling real estate. But you just got to go for the lowest price possible. You got to remember, if the, I'll leave you off on this. You know, if the offer doesn't scare you, that offer was just way too high. Think about that for a second really quick. If the offer doesn't scare you, it's way too high. And basically what that means is you need to make sure your offer in wholesaling real estate scares the snot out of you. Like, I'm really nervous to offer this low price. But if you use the good cop, bad cop method, maybe even a price first, maybe a low ball with a reason, and you actually do it the right way, you give that offer with, first and foremost, confidence, you give it with authority, a belief in yourself. Really, the true definition of confidence is a belief in yourself of what you're saying and what you're doing. And if you believe what you say, and if you truly believe that you can give a legit offer out here and you and your cash partner, your cash buyer can buy the property for cash, there's no way you're going to lose in this business. And the wholesalers that go out here and don't feel belief in their offer and, and believe that a cash buyer would buy at that price, if you really give an offer out here and you truly don't believe in your heart that a cash buyer will buy it for that, what's even the point? Like, duh. like what's the point of even making these offers to the sellers if that's going to happen, right? Give an offer that you truly believe a cash buyer will buy it for and you should have plenty of confidence to go do a wholesaling real estate deal. If you don't want to do it, you won't get the wholesaling deal. Just make sure that offer scares you. If the offer doesn't scare you, you're in the wrong business. You're doing the wrong offers. You're not making the most out of these deals. And when everyone comes out to me and they say, Zach, how do you get $50,000 deals? How did this guy make 70 grand on a deal? How did this guy make 200 grand on a deal? And I literally have a podcast, 200 grand on a deal matter. Uh, we have a whole podcast set up for it. Uh, we actually recorded it. It's pretty gangster. He made 200 grand on a deal. We, we talked to Jason. You saw the podcast on here. He made $72,500 on one probate deal. One probate deal, $72,500. And how did he do that? He made a low offer. He went for the no. He made sure that offer scared the snot out of him. And he made the money. That's how it works. If you want to make big boy bucks, big gal bucks, whatever, whoever's watching this, if you want to make big money in this business, you got to make sure your offer scares you. A lot of wholesalers don't make offers that scare them. A lot of wholesalers don't market in a way that scares them. If your marketing's not scaring you about how much it is, if your offers don't scare you about how low they are, and if your cash buyer's not scared of how you know, pr high price, you put the cash uh, buyer price for them by the contract, you're not going to win. And if you really want to truly win this business, I would first focus on making the lowest offer possible, talking to the most wholesalers possible, and talk with as much cash buyers, so you the highest quality cash buyers, and you'll go out here and make a ton of money in this business. I want everyone to understand this. Low offers 
a ton of marketing and a ton of cash buyer dispositions, marketing and great relationships will make you a ton of cash in this business. That's how you make cash. That's how you get su successful. That is how the game is played. So guys, that's really my instant offer formula today. If you want to instantly make deals happen and you want to instantly get the best price on your contracts, go for the no and it'll lead you to wholesaling success. So that's pretty much it. Everything I talked about, again, it's at freewholesaling.com. It's all there and I can help you out there and uh, get it going. So guys, I really appreciate it. And uh, let's get in some comments. Let's uh, talk. Let's see how I can help you guys out. Uh, first and foremost, I've had a lot of people say, freewholesaling.com, shut down. It's not working. Uh, rah, rah. And then I see a lot of crying going on with it. Let me tell you first and foremost, we moved freewholesaling.com to a new site where basically there's more videos, it's in a way better format, there's more downloadable things, and it's just a better place to consume it. We let you guys uh, 2x the speed on everything. Uh, we changed all the video hosting over. Uh, we did the entire thing. It looks a million times better than the old freehosting.com. And I might be saying, oh, I, I click freehosting.com and it goes to the site and it's not working. It's Guys, you have your cookies cleared. We know this was going to happen. And unfortunately, cookies really don't clear for most people after 30 days. And all you literally have to do is just don't go to FRE. It already pops up. You click enter the cookies. Just go to freewholesaling.com. Don't let it auto do it for you. And go on there and it'll rebookmark the site and it'll be done, right? Even do an incognito tab if you want. Heck, go to flipwithwork.com. Go to free course and it'll direct you to it too. You guys have your cookies cleared from the previous freewholesaling.com that we moved everything over. So the experience is amazing. In 90 days, nobody even know that that was even a problem. But for us to move everything over, we actually had to shift freehosting.com to a completely different site uh, because when you have hundreds of thousands of people, the website couldn't handle it. And so we made a new website where we can have millions of people in there watching hundreds and hundreds of hours a day. Just the site we currently had to host everything just couldn't handle that capacity anymore. And... We had to upgrade a lot of money on it, but we moved it to a place. We had coders code the entire thing. Uh, we made sure it was perfectly done. We made sure everything was embedded perfectly. And you can do everything the best way. Uh, so if freelancing.com is not working for you, just go to flipwithrick.com. There's a free course tab. Uh, here's another bonus on the description of this video. Freeholesling.com is in there. Um, I'll leave everyone know in the, in the comments too, uh, where it's at too, but yeah, guys, clear your cookies too if it's not working. I, I actually did have that problem. I want people to understand. I did. I, I saw that problem too. But most people have uh, their login saved. It doesn't work anymore. All right, the, the logins actually don't work anymore. It's freelancing.com changed. It's kind of a public thing now. And so uh, there's us logging in. There's none of that stuff. It's it's all in there. And so. Uh, that's what I'm excited for. I know it'll help a lot of people out. So what I want to do is answer some comments, do some one-on-ones, obviously, and uh, help the people out and uh, get it going. So let's uh, scroll freelancing.com on the, on the bottom here. And uh, love to help you guys out and, and really see how I can help you guys become better wholesalers. That's the point. Thomas, all right, Michigan, hit him up, Michigan. Xavier, send him over some deals and uh, get it going. Santiago said, I have a seller selling me a vacant lot in a premium area where the cops, I'm guessing comps, uh, range from the 400s to even new construction that's 750 and already sold. He's asking 56,000 for it. Y'all think that's a good deal? Now, Santiago, if comps are aging for 400 to even a new construction that's 750, here's the problem, Santi Santiago. You gotta go to freelancing.com. There, there's very fundamentals when talking to sellers, looking at comps, saying it's a good deal or not. First, what's the square footage of the comps, right? First and foremost, you didn't tell me that. Like, it's the major streets. What's going on with this? I, I, I honestly have no idea because I don't know the square footage of the property. I don't know your builds. I don't know the neighborhoods. I don't know the same subdivision. These are really good questions. Um, I need more specifics on this deal. Um, I really can't. So give me more specifics. Love to help you out. Let's see here. Santiago said, barely started nine to five. Bro, come on. You got to get some spelling up. We got a spelling here, all right? At my hotel in Miami today, I asked, I asked a question, and um, I think half of everyone I talked to today said no English. And I'm like, what, what country am I in? 
like no one's spe- no one's speaking English in this hotel. It's crazy. It's it's actually getting crazy here. I, I I know they're getting workers everywhere, but I'm like, man, if I wholesale Miami, everyone's got to be bilingual here. It's just hilarious. But <laughs> Let's see here. And he said, uh, similar to the, yeah, take it to the limit. That's a good one too. Let's see here. Ever said like the good cop, I love, I'm telling you the good cop, bad cop works. It's smooth. It's nice. Let's see here. I love everyone helping everybody out in the comments. So shout out to them there. Let's see here. He said, uh, well, I see people say that you already should use 20% of the air of a new construction. So Santiago, you're the guy overcomplicating this. Go for the no. Rebecca said, Zach, what virtual market would suggest? I work in, or I was in Des Moines and I ha- haven't had much luck. So Rebecca, honestly, at this point, you've done Houston. You, you're at Des Moines now. You're trying to make this work in Alaska. Um, I need to know what your marketing is in Des Moines. Um, I know wholesalers doing well in Des Moines. Uh, I know wholesalers doing good in, uh, Ames, Ames, Amnes, wherever Iowa state is at. And then I got new wholesalers, you know, trying to get deals there. So I know it's working there, right? I know it's working there. Shout out Nick sending up a hundred probate letters. Shout out to him. That's awesome. Love to see that. see here. Joe says, is freelancing.com still available or are you going to buy your program? Joe, come on, bro. This is hilarious. If you want to get uh, Flipper Plus for free, you go do a JV deal with me. On top of that too, if you want to go to the free wholesaling program, you go to freewholesaling.com. Joe, because you have your cookies all done, you got to clear the cookies. Stop eating your cookies. All right? Clear your cookies. Clear your cookies and then stop crying to me. I, I just, guys, I, I don't know how many times I say clear the cookies. Let, let me, everyone put the cookies emoji in for Joe so Joe can see this. All right. I, I want Joe to, let me put the cookies in here so Joe can realize this. Frilson.com is not working for you. You got to clear the cookies. Yum, 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 yum. Cl- clear the cookies and you'll be fine. All right, like seriously, get a put 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 a cookie emoji in the chat so everyone that's complaining about freelancing.com just clear their old cookies so we can handle it more. Uh, there's no way I can put two hundred thousand wholesalers in there and double the freelancing.com people in there unless I actually go out here and clear the cookies and made a so website into something that can actually handle the volume on it. it drives me crazy. I, I just oh no, it's not working. It's not working. Uh, it, it come on. If you literally just typed in flipwithwork.com, saw the link on there, go to the bottom of this video and see it's right there. I just, I, I will make one bold statement for this before I say this. If you can't do some inference uh, decision making and figure out that if the website's not working now, I should probably go to flipwithwork.com or maybe description is YouTube to see if where he's saying the free wholesaling site should be. And guess what? I can do it. If you can't do that, I don't know if you can do a wholesaling deal. I it takes some context clues. You know, I used to watch Blues Clues as a kid. We got to do our context clues to figure out where to get the free course. Freewholesaling.com. Go incognito. Seriously, if it's not working, just go incognito. It'll work for you. I'm telling you. Clear cookies. See all the cookies in the chat? Cookie, 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 cookies. Cookies. All right. Here, I got a I got a, I got cookies on here. Clearly cookies, all right, y'all? Clearly cookies, y'all. All right. I was expecting that. I knew someone was going to talk smack about Frillson.com. They didn't clear the cookies, all right? I was prepared. I'm on a, I'm on another level today. All right, he ain't messing with me here. 
<laughs> All right, y'all. Let's uh, let's do some one on ones. Let's do some one on ones. Let me put the stream link on. Let's help each other out. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, who we got first? We got Todd. How's that? How's it going? What's up? How are you? We're doing pretty good. Awesome. What's up? How can I help you guys out? Um, so basically, we do have a deal under contract right now. And we're kind of just like hesitant to send out the our like our property out to our cash buyers. Um, we haven't really vetted too many cash buyers yet. And we're kind of just curious. Like we just have a couple questions about the process of disp dispositions and like we're kind of just scared we're gonna get our deal stolen and stuff like that. So I just, I just had a couple of questions. You should only be scared if you're not willing to do it the right way. So yeah. so we're having troubles because there's so it's kind of it's it's like the he owns the biggest like real estate place in all of Des Moines. The person the seller. Did, no, the buyer. Okay. Yeah. And he's interested. We were recommended by another agent to, that he was looking for a lot of properties in this area. And like, we're very hesitant about sending him the address, but we don't know if we should be. Cause I mean, we have it, everything earnest, everything set up at the title company and everything. So, but we just don't know to trust him or not. We yeah. try, we asked for a proof of funds. He kind of was like, I, I can't give you a number until I walk through it and like, he can't walk through it without us telling him the yeah. address. So he it's... said it was understandable that we asked for it, but he, since we don't have a number, we can't really like send them. Did you see how many properties he owns or bought in for cash? Um, oh, so we see a lot of people, um, like we see the people that work for him in his, in his like below him. Um, he's got, he's and they're a listing a lot of properties. Team. They're listing a lot of properties on. I'm the list. list. How many is he, what company does he have and how many has he bought in? He does have an LLC and his LLC it shows up as zero links. But I don't know. Have you asked him what company he's going to buy this under? No. Now, personally, for you, he might be at a thing where it's like, so for personally, for me, I put him on trusts, and sometimes the trust is owned by a separate company in each rental property I own. Sometimes it's all over the board, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I kind of get where he's at. At this point, <clears throat> Has he shown any proof that he owns any property? Um, yeah, you know, he was just like telling us, like, yeah, if you want to look look up, like, we can just look up his name, and it like shows up that he's the CFO of he's, his, he seems like of his he's, agency, yeah, and yeah. like the CEO of the agency. Like, there's like ten properties that they flipped that are listed on Zillow right now, but like, I can't, oh, keep, I can't find that they own it. I can just see that they're listing them and that they flipped them. Okay. How did you find this guy? Um, An agent that yeah, we've talked to, agent. and he, he was like, oh, this guy's buying up all the properties in that area. Like, yeah. Okay. Well, honestly, I mean, maybe, right? Uh, so let's talk about the dispo process. First and foremost, to control the title company, you control the deal. You got to control the contract also. Yeah. And so if you control those two things, your dispo should be pretty clean. Okay. Um, you should also control the process. So obviously there's bad cash buyers out here that will try to sneak around the deal, but it's very hard to sneak around the deal when you have the title company already set up with the seller. Yeah. And so first and foremost, why, why is he being not like so transparent? He's, uh, it seems a little like, uh, that's the problem. Like, like, he look, see, look, look, and he has thousands of followers. Yeah, and, like, he he's a big deal. He has like, a big deal. Or, I know like, people with thousands of followers in wholesaling don't that own, don't own exactly. one rental property. Exactly. Right? And he says he does own some rentals in the same like neighborhood and area that we're in. And then he also oh, like he's trying to buy one right now to like flip and resell, it, like just flip it. You know? How many followers does he have? Like five thousand. Okay, that's dude. I, I, I had a DM from a guy that bought seventy thousand fake followers. They're all from the Philippines. I can care less. Yeah. Right. That's fair. And so fake followers, real five, everyone's fake in this world right now. So, you know, it's the one thing you can't fake. You can't, you can't fake a HUD. You can't yeah. fake it. And so I, I hate to tell you this, but from what I've been talking to you lately on this, it seems like you have a really good deal, right? Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Unless he wants to show the last five, pro just give me the address of the last five houses you've bought for cash. Just show me. All right. We'll ask him. Give me the addresses. Right. Yeah. 
the big ballers aren't afraid to do that. Okay. The fake wholesalers are afraid to do that. The real wholesalers aren't. So I, I would pro I, I'd be very wary of that. All right. And so if I got I got to get some proof, you know, if he's scared to show the proof of funds, show me how many properties he bought. I just, I haven't found one good wholesaler that, one good cash buyer that was afraid of that. Not one. Yeah, we, we did use your purchase and sales agreement, everything. And I guess I was just, I was kind like, of- Like, bro, if, you, if I'm a cash buyer, like, I would just show you the address. There's nothing to hide. Mm -hmm. Because the company is in, so if it's on 123 Main Avenue, it'd be like 123 Main Avenue LLC. So it's like, yeah, the LLC is owned by me, but- if you're going to sue me, you're going to sue the company, which only owns that property. Like there's not much liability. And so I, dude, go to the next buyer. I think you're in a really good area, man. Okay, yeah. sweet. All right. Yeah. So I just want to ask you just because so I had a couple of questions about just like the purchase and sales agreement. I was just kind of curious how easy it would be for the seller to back out of that contract if she got like, <laughs> or yeah, like, I guess like, it's really easy to back out of that contract. Actually, you, the point of that assignment of contract is that it's super easy to get out of. For the seller? No, for the uh, buyer. Okay. Yeah, I was just no, curious because if they get out of it, they have to forfeit their EMD. Right. Right. Yeah. But it's so the, easy. We're asking for the seller, like if if someone comes in and offers oh. you like I have 10k more than I. Like, yeah. So I mean, honestly. I hate to tell you this, but like until a seller could technically say, I'm never selling to you ever. And I refute a seller has to sign a deed over for it to be sold. You can't for, you can't, Oh, you signed a contract automatically forfeit the house for this price. It doesn't work like that. You still have to sign a deed over at the end of the day, the deed has to be signed over. Yeah. You're committed, but like, it's not like you still have to, right. It, it kind of shows you should, right. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like getting married to a point, right? Like you're married. Some people aren't faithful when they're married. They should be, but it still won't stop from, a, from someone from doing it. Usually when you're married, it stops them from doing it, right? Um, and so it's just, once you're in contract, it's very hard to get out of it. But the thing is you do have an equitable interest in the property and you could put a memorandum if they try all that stuff. But then it gets in a whole legal thing and it's probably not best. Now let's talk about sellers wanting to get out of the deal. Most sellers want to get out of a deal because of three main things. And I've been recording the third day wholesaling challenge where I went over to Miami and we, we dug on this deep and literally day 20 is like what to do if a seller wants to get out of the contract. So I, I went over the whole thing. First and foremost, guys, the seller wants to get out of the deal. If you don't follow up with them, they don't feel certain with you. If they don't feel any certainty with you or you're not legit. So here's the problem. You two are youngins, right? You're, you're kind of close to my age. Oh, snap, you're young. You might not have the money to buy this thing. I don't feel comfortable with you guys. This is a scam. I went out, right? Why do they feel like that? Because she probably should. You're young. You might not have the money for this. How are you going to show that you're legit? First and foremost, have the title company call her. Oh, what? This is a real title company? Like the transactions? Oh, these guys are actually professionals. Okay, wow. Huh? Huh? Wow. The best way I've always cleared up any problems with the seller think I'm too young and I've been doing this since I was 17 years old, okay? Way, way younger than y'all. Have a legit title company call them. Oh, we've done thousands of transactions. We know them. We're ready to help you out with the whole process. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, second thing most people do is they don't follow up with the seller at all. They refuse to follow up with the seller. It's like, are they ignoring me? And just, I guess we're out of the deal now. And that's all honestly what we have. And sometimes the title company doesn't follow up with the seller either. And so you can't force, I can have a seller say, I'm not selling it. And this has actually happened to me before. You get the memorandums, you can do all that. But for you guys, I probably want it. Uh, the thing about memorandums is, unfortunately, this is legally binding. So if you ever have to go to court one day, the court's going to ask you a pretty simple question. Do you actually have the funds to buy this yourself? If you don't, I probably want to put a memorandum in place. If you do, Theoretically, you technically still can if you want to go to court because you get a hard money loan or something like that. But it's a, I wouldn't put a memorandum unless you're actually starting to do some big amount of deals. I got about, I think about 15 memorandums in the system right now for myself.
And one or two of them usually pop a year and I end up getting the deal. But that's a little more advanced strategy. Okay. And But those people try to get out and I'm not letting them out because they, they wasted too much time and money for me. So it's all up to you guys. I can rant about this all day. But if you guys follow up with your seller and you do everything in a nice, clean way, you'll do it. There's a certain percentage of people that want to get out of the contract no matter what because someone offered them a bigger price. And there's not much you can do about it. Yeah. And she did drop off the abstract since it, since we're in Iowa. She dropped off the abstract to our title company, so she got to like kind of meet some of the guys, like some of the yeah. Guys, so. I, she, I, at the end of the day, man, she signed a paper agreeing to a price. Yeah, I take that back. The one they were worried about is just because she'd be asked her to send pictures earlier. Like I think it was yesterday, and two days she, ago. Yeah, and she still hasn't really got. How far is this house from you guys? What was that? How far is this house from you guys? 35, 40 minutes. Go and take pictures of it. Yeah. I, I We just wanted a picture of like the basement or something. Like, yeah. Go get pictures of it. Mm -hmm. What did you guys do last weekend? Studying? We're going yeah. tomorrow, actually. Yeah, we're we are touring tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Already. You guys can find an hour of your day go 30 minutes back and forth. We're just trying to find someone to walk through with. That's why we're just kind of having a problem with that agent. See, we I like have, that. Yeah. We don't know if we walk through with the agent or if, like, if we just. I walk through, through with a legit buyer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would. Let's go find a buyer, man. Okay. Yeah. For How sure. many buyers do you, you get? Get that one guy. Where, where are the other ones? We've talked to multiple, and everyone keeps coming in, and they're like, "Yeah, we could only do seller financing on this property," and like they'll offer us a really good number, but I'm like, we "Sorry, can't. we're only accepting <laughs> cash offers." That's what us and the seller agreed to. Like, are you talking to landlord buyers? Um, I mean, we spoke to a couple, but honestly, we're getting. I feel like we called a lot the other day. We're mostly just getting voicemails, honestly, right now. But we definitely need to call back. We didn't really want to call on a Sunday today. So, I mean, heck, I know that guy. That guy's kind of risky. Um, yeah. I wouldn't go with that guy. Um, yeah. Unless you can verify he's bought from wholesalers before or he's bought houses for cash. So if, be if, I, if I ask him tonight if he can send over the last five properties that he bought for cash and what company he bought them under and he tells us, then – we should then it would I would say so. I mean has he bought from wholesalers before? Okay. Ask him. That was like the first question he asked. It was like, are you wholesaling this deal or do you, did you buy it? Did he have a problem with you wholesaling it? He didn't say anything. No, about yeah, it, no. I mean we talked to more about the property right after. So. That's I, this guy's weirded me out. I'm just being honest. Okay. Most cash buyers they're like, Oh, you're a wholesaler? That's great. Like they actually are happy you're wholesaling because they're bringing you deals. Yeah. Be careful, man. Um, I hate to see this deal get thrown off. I know I'm being a little, I'm being very cautious on purpose, but I'm telling yeah. you, I, I just just be careful with this one. I don't even lose this deal. Yeah, we've been we've been kind of freaks about sending out the address. We're like yeah. super, we're so cautious. We're like, we can't get this stolen. Like, yeah, like but, we're taking I, it too strictly. Like where it's like I, mean, I do a lot of deals. There's about four or five a year that someone always goes behind my back and does this. I just did a JV deal. Ended up probably gonna make fifteen grand on it, and just got snaked. That's okay. You know, the person we're JVing with decided they were gonna call the title company the last day and say, "Actually, uh, Zach's company, just give it to me." That they agreed to give it, and they never reached out. The title company didn't reach out. They just gave it to the full guy. And the full guy just took it. Yeah. Personally, called the guy, and no care in the world. Like, yeah. starts ignoring me. I'm like. You know, I'm out what seven seventy five hundred, but I ain't gonna cry about it. Like that, that's peanuts for what I'm making. But I'm like, I'm just. It happens all the time, and karma gets back to you when you do that. But yeah, I remember part of this business. Yeah, I remember he hearing about a video. You you were like talking about like the person that went behind your back. And you referred to him as like Donald, Donald Duck. Duck. Yeah, never forgot that guy. He buys four to five houses a month, cash, yeah. and he still does that. Yeah. Yeah, and that was like when he was 17. He's right? the meanest Canadian I never, I've ever known in my life. Yeah. <laughs> he's the only mean Canadian I know. I know, I know a lot of Canadians. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't even get into it right now. Okay. And one more. One well, more he's in his 80s, and, he does, and he's actively doing that stupid yeah. stuff. It's crazy. Holy cow. Still I can't even say anymore. He's going he's gonna to try to sue me, so whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um, I still won at the end of the day, so screw him. Screw Donald Duck. That's great, right, baby. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> And then uh, lastly, so when we're when we're talking to agents, like, and trying to get cash buyers, like, 
how trusting should we really be of them? Like, I think the agents are pretty stand up. Um, usually, I, I've always found this to be the, the case. The broker, the agent, not broker, but like the more broke the agent is, you can call them a brokey agent, or a broke agent that doesn't make any money, they're more willing to stab you behind the back because they need the money. Yeah. An agent that's doing hundreds of, they're making hundreds of thousands of dollars and they just want more revenue, they, they're not going to stab you behind the back. They're not too greedy. They have pretty much abundant mentalities. Yeah. It's the ones that are barely making a buy that are going to screw you. And I hate to say this, but like you see people that rob, steal, do all these terrible things. Most likely, they're not making a ton of money. And right. there's an end of the day where you're making a ton of money, you're not going to do these crazy illegal things. Now, rich people do illegal things all the time, but like stuff like usually the, the petty crimes, the thefts, the sneaky stuff, it's usually with agents that don't make a lot of money. And so that's my big warning sign I found. Okay. And so remember, the rich agents have a ton of cash buyers in their back pocket. Right. Yeah. And we did we look up have, agents. It's easy. And Bogan actually called somebody that like we saw that there was a cash sale close to the, like a street over from our property. And Bogan called him up and was like, we paid per deal. And he told him like everything like that. And, I mean, there's definitely some realtors that are not interested in doing Yeah, that they were just like, no, I would not be interested in that at all. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's fine. I mean, pump up the volume, the more the merrier. But yeah. So we, we should feel comfortable sending like an agent, like the address and everything and tell them. If they're okay with wholesaling, they're okay with using your title company, they're okay with you making a profit and they know they're going to get paid, I have no problem with it. Okay. And I, we, I think we're like thinking about giving them, you say like doing a marketing fee or something like that, but. No, they, they need to make at least five grand on the deal. They need to be, okay. And that's what we were coming okay, on top. So for example, if I have a deal locked up for a hundred, I sell for 120, you sell to your buyer for 125. They'll pay the five grand out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, sweet. And then I guess I had one more question. It was, should we make all buyers sign an assignment before showing them the property? Or like, how, how strict should we be on that? That was something else. We have to walk through before they sign the assignment. Okay. And that's like me and Logan were thinking like, yeah, maybe you can walk through first. Okay. Here's the problem. I would do, uh, that's a perfect world, right? That's yeah. always the perfect world. But remember, they're buying a contract from you. And so it's like, I mean, are you going to blindly try to buy a house without even looking? No. Yeah. And remember, they're putting up a four or $5,000 non-refundable deposit. It's kind of snaky to do that. Now, if they go through the house, they see it, they look, they're like, yes, I'm okay with this. Then they give you five grand, and then they want out. There's no way I'm letting them out, and I'm legally good. But if you go to a judge and they're like, well, he didn't see the house, and he didn't know it had all these problems, then you won't win a case on their $5,000 non-refundable EMD. But you do the other way around. Yeah. Okay. I'm playing six in chess. I, I, I know I know how it, the process is done. It seems simple, but it's done in a very advanced way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we're kind of just trying to be as safe as possible right now. And I don't know. We're really trying to limit. I get something. it. You don't want to be too safe, though. Yeah, that's that's what we're. I think that's where we're like at right now because we're only, we're we've only sent like the address out to like maybe two people. All right, bro. You gotta be guys. You gotta be straight shooters. Like, hey, how many properties you bought in cash? Show me the address. Show me the last four or five addresses. Just show me what they are. Where are they? Tell me. Right right and then, I mean, once we find out that they're legit, just send them the address and not really. I would. Um, at that point. That's most of those bigger guys. Let's put some trust into them. Yeah. Okay, and that, that's our biggest thing. So, I mean, realtors, you think it's okay to tell them the address, or at least like the successful ones you were saying? Like, yeah. Like, you know, I, mean, I would say, oh, reach out to these guys right here to, you know, get a cash buyer in the deal. But the majority of people watching this, you know, are wholesalers. That's why you're watching this. I, that you're you're going to you're gonna have to go through all the wholesalers trying to daisy chain you. So that's why I'm not like promoting it on this, right? Mm -hmm. um, so keep, keep it up, guys. Keep up the volume of the cash buyers. I would seriously consider more landlord buyers and go from there. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. For sure. And if you don't have a buyer by next week, we're we're gonna yeah. have some serious talks. We, we're gonna have to get more in the paint, man. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully next week. It's like not being conserved. We we just gotta get it done. Yeah. Do you ask your title company for buyers? Um. So he's actually a cash buyer himself. Yeah. And he's title company. We should have listened yeah. to you. It's we... an attorney, so like, because in okay. our attorney state. What price so... would he buy it for? So we gave him a number and like they were kind of fighting with us and he was just, we gave him a number and it was, it was like, 
it was lower than what the one the street over sold for. And like, we thought it was like reasonable. Like, it was a perfect and he was like, yeah, that's way too high. Like no way. And then he won't. Like, yes. So don't tell me the price and stuff, but if he was going to buy it, would he make a profit still? He won't even tell yeah. us about it. He refuses to tell He's us. He's like, you number. told us a different price. And we, we never. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fine. Fine. He, he can't, uh, or is it, he can't poop or eat. Right. Don't, don't do it. Fine. Whatever. Yeah, that's what we were kind of coming to. Was just Can we like, give you a price? That's a joke. Whatever. Make it too difficult, then whatever. Yeah. Let's go with another guy. Yeah. Okay. All right, All right guys. Keep it up. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> see you next Sunday. All right. See ya. Bye. Xavier. Yo. What's up, man? What up, Zach? So, I'm looking crazy. But anyway, I have a quick question. I got the probate list. I asked for it within the last 30 days and I was cold calling it, but it's like, um, so I sent out a letter because I don't know if cold calling is working for me right now. Cold calling is perfect on probates, man. Okay. So as I was cold calling, it was going to like, I was looking it up on true people search. It was just like the ages, like they're really old, like, of course, but it's like, should I call it? <laughs> this oh, is not funny. You know too, man. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, and then I'm getting the code violations also, but like, I'm in my, like I told you, um, back when I was at college, I wasn't really in my local area, but now I'm in my local area. So like, I want to do like, what's the best way to, I've been kind of st stuck with marketing and I've been looking at your videos and I don't want to keep consuming and not taking action really. So like, I like it. Yeah. So what's the best way? Like, do this so first of all you're skipping even watching the videos you're just talking to the guy that makes the videos that's even better right right exactly. you're, just, you're just getting straight to the point yeah. i love it. everyone should do it right you see the stream yeah. link yeah. hop on and do it right i love what you're doing so let's talk about this so what market are you in right now um michigan kalamazoo, kalamazoo michigan all right, all right okay okay so do you have a car yeah i really well i don't but i'm able to access my mom's she works so that's all that's good yeah. um when does she work uh, she works from eight to four, and then I go to barber school, depending on the day. But I'm finishing up my hours for barber school from okay nine thirty to four thirty. But I can take a break. I'm I'm trying to get this money, but <laughs> I don't know. All right, so uh, let's do this. Um, weekends, let's do two hundred dry reverse drying for hours leads on the weekends in Kalamazoo. Okay, I mean you got what? Yes. Seven months before everything starts getting chilly, right? So I think yeah. you got seven months of going hard in that mm -hmm. uh, before it gets crazy. And let's do reverse drawing for dollars, man. Let's do it okay. with government list. Let's do it with everything we possibly can. Let's cold call that revert that drawing for dollars list also. And add, in, and add in those probates too? Mix it all in? or our pro Yeah, let's do the probates. Why not? Let's okay. put some stickiness right. on the probates. Okay, cool. All right, cool. Because I, when I put a list, they give it to me. Like, it's not hard at all. Like, when I'm in Kalamazoo. Well, there, there's like, some places that are harder than others, but yeah, when someone's I was crying right now in the chat. Like, oh, yeah. it's so hard for me. Yeah. You're good, man. We're going to keep all it right, on the cool. DL. We're not going to talk about that, though. All right. All right. Cool. All right, man. That's all I wanted to really talk about. You appreciate it. So how many there. reverse drawing for dollars this weekend? 200. You said 200. 200. Yeah. With sticky notes. Yep. Sticky Xavier, notes. What are you going to put on the sticky note? I'm curious. Uh, sticky notes really just say, What's he gonna hi, say? Hi, my, hi, my name is Xavier. I have a quick question about your property and put my phone number uh, or my Google yeah. Plus phone number. <laughs> oh, also, sorry, yeah, but also, what about uh, bandit signs, too? I see those around town right now, like 200 and anything above, then start doing bandit signs. Okay, bet. okay, cool. Get right. 200 first. Say, okay. please call me back. Let's make it nice, and uh, you should be good, man. All right, cool. All right. All right. Thanks, Zach, man. Have a good night. Enjoy your night in Miami, too. <laughs> I, I, I'm not a crazy guy. So I'm having a good time. Okay, right. man. Have a good one. Boom. Carlos. Oh, you're not Carlos. You're Mir. What's up? Hey, how's it going, my man? I'm blessed. We'll get to Carlos next. How's it going? How can I help you out? Hey, man. Just wanted to start us off by saying thank you so much for everything you're doing. You're fighting the good fight. Um, <laughs> to everyone who's watching, this is the only person who not only does this for free, but also spends his personal time to give advice to us. And I really appreciate that, which is why I'm, I'm here and I'm, I want to ask you a question. Awesome. Uh, uh, not, not, to, not to complain, but, um, but I am going to complain. Um, 
I've been I've been trying to pull the code code violations list virtually from uh, in, in my market in North Carolina, and I'm in Canada, and that's not really working for me. But um, I, I was uh, guided by one of the one of the people on the on the customer service uh, and end of the call to to go directly to the water department website and pull like water liens or something like that. And I, and, and I did that, and I cold called that list. But that list um, is is compromised of single family apartment, like it's different types of properties. And I, and, I, and I was one. I didn't know how to tackle like apartments, duplexes. That's number one. Number two, um, most of most of the people that I call, I I skip trace on on true people search, and ninety percent of them either don't pick up or or it's just straight to voicemail. So it's really frustrating. I don't know what to do. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, which is why, which is why I'm here, man. It's so simple, right? First and foremost, code violations. You say it went from code violations to water lanes. Those aren't even related at all. Yeah. Um, Weird. Uh, Are you trying to get the water shut off list and they gave you the water lanes? Uh, yeah, water shut off list. Okay. Obviously. All right. Yeah. So code violations. Do you have that list? Um, they they also guided me. I also called them. They also guided me to the website, and there's a the which is like a map, and then it gives me the code violations like overgrown lawn and bad roof and stuff like that, and then fire. Yeah, it's it's, it's it's like a list. Okay, so you got the code violations list. No problem. That it's the probates, right? Yeah. I, okay. Uh, probates. They didn't. Uh, there there isn't something online for that, and they just said it's uh, uh, confidential. Okay. Is it a public utility lien? Uh, is it a public utility company or a private? Public. Okay. Have you talked to the manager? Yeah. Uh, what would the manager say? What's the manager's first name? Who's in charge of the entire water de department? Um, I, I, I've, I've spoken to different uh, water departments. I'm talking about like the manager. You, talk, you said you talked to the top person, right? Yeah, I did. And I told What's them. What's their name? Uh, I, I didn't ask for their name, but um, but uh, I told so try them. Try to get that, another meeting and ask for the name. You got to make people accountable. When people aren't doing their job, they have to be accountable when they are in the public. St. Canada, bro. So here's the thing. Get to the person that's actually in charge of the entire water department. You said you already talked to them. Um, make sure you're not talking just to a manager, like the actual person in charge of it. Get their information. And then you can go to higher up and can complain about them. And make them actually do their job. That's the only way you're ever going to do it. Hey. Bro, I I've gotten this all the time, dude. I'm saying because this happens all the time. It's private info. We can't give it to you. Okay. Well, I'm going to just go talk to the city attorney. And then if you're not doing your job, we're going to get in trouble. Oh, uh, uh, and then the city attorney's like, um, actually, Mr. Person, we actually have to give it. It's not what you think is the law. It's actually, here's the law. We actually have to give that information. And then go from there. On freewholesaling.com, I know you said uh, act, uh, say that you're a student in university and you're under uh, your it's a school project and everything. And I, and, I, and I said that to every single manager. One of them actually told me to to tell my professor to come down here and ask for the list themselves. And I was like, wow, this. Like, uh, they don't want to give it to you. You said one of the managers is that the you gotta get the person in charge of it. Yeah. And you said you've talked to this person before. Go call, go call the city attorney or find somebody in that market. What county is this? Uh, th that was in Charlotte. Charlotte. You, I bet there's a person in Charlotte that'll walk in and get the water shot off list with you and they'll split the deal. And they'll, they won't split the deal, they'll split the list with each other. I have a cousin in Fairfax. Virginia? Yeah, that's my, yeah, that's my only cousin in the US. That's a little far from Charlotte, bro. Yeah. You can I mean, find somebody in the chat here in Charlotte that wants to get the water shot off list. Yeah, I mean, should I tell my cousin to, should I tackle that market? No, that's too far. Fairfax is ridiculously overpriced. It's not a good wholesaling market. Find somebody in this face in the Facebook group or in the comments here right here in Charlotte. There's a ton of them that will get the water shot off list with you and will go in person. I also do Greensboro, High Point, Winston-Salem, but none, so of them, the none, none of them gave me the list. Give your phone number out, give your Instagram, and have those people go in person with you and you help each other out, Okay. And what and what about the um, so so the people who I actually do call? I have no problem calling. I have no problem to speak. How about them. this? This is even better. They pull the water shot off list. They get it. You skip trace it, and you guys both share it. 
Deal? Deal. But how about how Deal. about like Deal. Another question. How about how about like I have no problem calling anyone. I have no problem speaking. I don't have that type of anxiety. But but when I actually do, I rarely get the phone picked up. It's either voicemail or it's either wrong number or it's either the guy. Using com. I mean, it's not the best quality data. So you get it for free and get the worst of results or you have to pay for a service for the skip tracing. It's one or the other. I mean, I, when you're doing virtual wholesaling, that's kind of your only your options. I wish I could tell you there's other ones, but there's really not. You I mean you can DM people, but for virtual wholesaling, no. I would say reverse trying for dollars is the guaranteed best one. So if you really want to go crazy, you can find that same person, pull the list, have them reverse try for dollars, new cold call that list maybe, or you answer the calls. Um, that's the only other suggestions I can really give to you, man. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, man. All right. Any other questions? No, man. Hopefully I'll get that. So first. You better go in the comments and give everyone your Instagram handle and let anyone in Charlotte hit me up. Let's work together. For sure. Hopefully I'll get that first one under my belt. It's the first one that All I right. Mary, I better see your, yourself in the comments. What's your Instagram handle by chance for everyone to go crazy? It's at Mirshrufi. So M E E R S H R O O F Y. Kind of long, but it's. All right. Put it in the comments right now. Charlotte, help me out. Let's do it. All right. All right. Perfect. All right. I'll see hey, you soon, man. Maybe after my first deal, we can finally 1v1 on MW2. We'll see. Get the water shaft list. All right, man. All right. Have a good one. <laughs> All right. Carlos. Hey, what's up, Zach? What's up? How are you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. I'm blessed. Thank you for to be alive. Me too, man. <laughs> what's All up? Right, How can I help you out? So I got a couple questions. So I got good news and bad news. <laughs> Uh-oh. So the good news is uh, uh, I got a solid lead, and I got an appointment with the seller tomorrow. Uh, okay. the, bad, the bad news is the seller is not very cooperative, and uh, he didn't want to discuss any of the details of the property over the phone. I tried to do the NCTP, or all, all the methods you teach, but, I mean, it, it, he said he wasn't going to talk anything about on the phone. So how far of a drive is it for you? It's like two minutes from here. It's, it's really, I mean, two minutes? I 20 minutes. Oh, no, 20. What, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get off early from work, you know, because I work too late, but I'm going to get off early and uh, I'm going to go meet him. But that's the question. What, what sh how should I take this? I mean, is it worth it to go? Because he said he I wanted. I think you need the experience. I think at worst you get a deal. At best you get a deal. At worst, I mean, whatever. You just want to buy the property, right? Right. I found those people are usually very difficult. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I mean, if, between you, and me, man, most really good deals they're not difficult. They actually want to sell their house. Like for example, man, like if I'm selling you a car, and you ask me, hey, is it a is it a six cylinder? Is it an eight cylinder? And I say, stop asking such ridiculous questions. Like. It's like, no, no, that's like a legit question to ask, right? So, right. I'm not the biggest fan of it, man. Uh, most good deals, they're usually very open, but I still think it's worth it still to go on it and just see it. Yeah, because, I mean, on Silo, I can only see the pictures from the outside of the house, but he said it does. The only thing he said is it does need repair, but he yeah. didn't say anything else. So, what should I do, man? What, how should I approach? I think you go on the appointment, you give a low ball offer, you have the contract already print right there and see if he goes for it or not. Right. Okay. Okay. So what I've been doing, I mean, since like yesterday, I, uh, I had the day off and I actually partnered up with another wholesaler over here in the chat last, last week. Awesome. And, man. Uh, yeah. And he helped me with the prop string list and he also gave me access to the mojo. So he's helping me a lot and shout out to Ali. I don't know if he's listening right now. Shout out yeah, to Ali. Man. Yeah, Ali. His name is Ali. A -R -A 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 -L -I. Yeah. And, uh, Ali, let's yeah, go. Man. And uh, I also did sorry for dollars yesterday. I like a few leads. I pick up a few leads only. But, man, I've been working. I've been working my ass. So, um, also, I got another question. But all right, man. So, I got a friend that's got a bacon land in Liberty, Texas. It's like an hour drive from here. So he's, he wants to get rid of the, of the land. 
because he's paying taxes, so he's, he's motivated. But the, the thing is, I cannot find any information of the property, like of the vacant land. I mean, how can I uh, find the information for it? I got the address, but the nothing property shows up. Appraiser. I read try, but nothing comes up. All right, let's. What's the county? That's in Liberty. Okay, so the oh, it's in Liberty County. Yeah. County property appraiser. So there is a Liberty County property appraiser. Let's search Texas. Okay. The Liberty CIAD. Nine three. Wait, is this it? Hold on. Yep, this is it. Call this number for me, all right? It probably searches right here, bro. Okay. Uh, I can literally search the property right here. Go to um, it's libertycad.com. That's it. Liberty what? C? CAD.com. That's it. Okay. Uh, we'll try. Oh. I mean, I tried. I already tried. Uh, you tried that website? Tried that one. I think I think I already tried that one, but if that didn't um, work, there's a phone number underneath there you should call. I should call the number. Okay, okay. Yes, I tried oh, to yeah. look for the uh, with the name too, but nothing comes up. Yeah, if that call that website and ask about that property. All right, all right, man. Well, that was all my questions. All right, man. Appreciate it. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you, man. Have a good one. Boom. Aaron, what's going on, Zach? Mr. Dederer, Dreder, Louisiana, wherever that is. Deritter. Deritter. All right. <laughs> What's up, man? Oh, nothing. Uh, thank you for everything y'all do for us. And uh, I just had a few <laughs> questions. Uh, the code violations. What's the best marketing channel that you like for code violations? So code violations can be really anything, man. Um, between you and me. I found reverse drawing for dollars to be the best one for one reason only, because when there's one code violation, let's say at this property, usually there's other ugly houses around it that aren't already a code violation that you can go and drive for dollars that one too. Right. So yeah, I've, usually, I've just been kind of using direct mail for. That's not bad either, man. Everything, but uh, I would probably do that too, man. I mean, it just direct mail. I've always said is the best ROT return on time. And so, I mean, as talking to you privately, I've known that you were making a good amount of money for wholesaling compared to right. newbies, right? And, and so and your time's probably like, very valuable. So the ROT with direct mail is probably a good one too. Yeah. And I mean, my job kind of keeps me able to do that. And so that's why the list I pull, I mainly, the only thing is I'm wondering if when you do it, do you do it all by hand? You know, you print out the piece of paper that you wrote, that you typed up, put it in the envelope, put your stamps and return address on it. Is that? No, we do that for probates. We do just postcards for a code violation. So I can use PropStream just with those postcards like that, right? Yeah. I mean, you can do an ROS postcard. Um, are they cheap? They might be the same price or better. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Um, the PropStream postcard doesn't hurt either. I'd probably just do that too, starting out. Actually, yeah, that's probably going to be better, honestly, because you're... You're probably not doing like an insane amount of them. So right, stick no. to the property. Oh, uh, you answered my question yesterday about the pre foreclosures. Uh, I've looked up the list pendants and notice of default. I may have to go back further to, you know, find some, but most of the time when I look it up at the courthouse, it don't pop up. Nothing. I mean, prop stream, does prop stream not pop on them up for you? It may. I just, I, I don't know if it's, you know, is it pretty accurate data? So it's usually pretty accurate, but one thing I always do is I actually physically find the pre foreclosures and then cross reference it with what PropStream says. Most of the time they're spot on, but sometimes they're off by it's county by county. And so yeah. for every market I do, I just check. Uh, same thing with pre probates, all these other things. And so uh, I would check it first. Yeah. And then, uh, my, my probates, when I looked those up at the courthouse, uh, I spoke to a lady up there. She told me that, you know, small succession 
judgment of possession and small secession affidavit is really where I would find, you know, who the hares are to the properties. Is that sound right? I mean, here's the dude, the, every county is so different. So if your county does that as a way to do probate, go after it. Yeah. Cause I've found, you know, I've found, you know, the person who died and then it shows, you know, they're the uh, personal representative and then, but it's sometimes you, you find that it may not be a property on there. It just maybe a car or some guns or something like that. Yeah. You get that information and then you look them up on the property appraiser. Right. Right. So if I see a John Smith and John Smith isn't on the property appraiser, he probably doesn't own real estate. It's not worth it. Is there a property usually attached to those uh, court cases? No. Uh, oh, most dang. Of the time it, most of the time it's the legal description. And then I got to, you know, copy the okay. legal description. Go well, the to ones that don't have property usually don't have a legal description, right? Right. So that's probably, that. that's the little hack I would say. Yeah. Cause the ones with a legal description, you don't have to cross reference it. You just pull it and go after it. Yeah. I just, uh, Oh, so you're saying don't, don't find, you know, the PR for it. Just no, find the PR, but like, you don't, have to, you don't have to go crazy on like the analysis of the property. Now, if you're doing okay. direct mail, you're going to have to, you're, you're going to have to do all that with the direct mail. Heck, right. if you even do skip tracing, but just finding them, if they have a legal description, do it. If they don't, I, I wouldn't even go touch them. Right. Um, really, last thing is, uh, the, how do you find out if a water company is public or private company? You just ask them. Okay. Cause, uh, is it a private corporation or is the government own this? Okay. Because I, I went in uh, my local city, Derrida, uh I went up to the code enforcement office and literally – battle with them people for a whole month and i was starting to get angry and <laughs> i finally i finally told them that i was just gonna file a foia and literally the the main guy you know called me he's like hey you know come up here i got the records they they was just like put me, <laughs> off. They put me off they said he's in the field today he won't be back and <laughs> anyway i finally said that to the lady up there and i was like I, I'm just going to have to file a FOIA because I, I I should be able to get this information as a taxpaying citizen. And all I told him was that, you know, I just I was a taxpaying citizen doing independent research. And as I left it at that and at the end, you know, I had to. So they don't have this list or nothing. I had to go in his office and he opened his little, you know, cab, filing cabinet drawer, had to pull them out. And he went through each one. He's like, we can do this all day, you know. And I was just, you know, writing down the addresses and stuff. And uh, finally, when we got done, he, he wrote his personal number down. He said, he said, I just I just wanted to get to know you better. I didn't know what you was wanting all this information for. And I was like, just private independent research, you know. But this water company I talked to yesterday, it wasn't for the city. It's kind of for, like, our parish. And, uh. He, it should be government owned if it's especially if it's small time. Um, it's you're not. It's a big. It's sh it should be. Yeah. So who knows? You just gotta ask. They'll they'll tell you pretty quick. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, I haven't asked the uh, city for the uh, water shut off list yet. But that the uh, parish that we use for water out outside the city, I need to find out if they're private or public because I talked to the head guy at it yesterday, and he was just telling me like no i can't give you that there's people's information you can't have who ain't paid their water bills and i was just like i just need the list of the properties whose water has been shut off for non-payment and he's like i sorry i can't give it to you and he was real adamant about it so i guess i'm gonna i'll look tomorrow Go on, man. Find out. it's the same government they'll post someone's mugshot and make fun of them before they're even convicted uh, right yeah, that's right it's the same so it's like what, what 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 part of private information are we uh, talking about, right? Like, if yeah, you post exactly. people's faces and their address and the crime that they got arrested for, yeah. I thought we're innocent until proven guilty. That's right. Nope. So, show me the list. And yep. it, it's funny, right? And I, I'm not getting political or anything. Like that. I'm just saying it's like yeah, if I the know, government will reveal that information, and now you don't want to reveal this, it's like, come on, man, right? And so, yeah, most of those people that get arrested for something bad, yes, they probably most likely did it. 
But there are a few select people that get their name smeared through that didn't. And so if you're posting everyone's public stuff, you, you should do that. But that's a right. funny story about code violations, man. I You stuck oh, true. What? It's going to be another one with this water company because I'm not oh, going to yeah. stop until they give me my list. If it's a private company, you know you can't do it. You're smart enough for that. But if it's public, they have to. Right. And then and that guy like, knew he had to. He was just – he thought you were stupid or you didn't really know what you're doing. Yep. But you listen to me, so it's like – and you didn't give up, man. You're not a quitter, and I love it. Hey, literally, it took yeah, – there was somebody on the live a while back. I, I messaged them, and I told them, I said, don't give up. I literally had to fight these people for a month, and they looked at me like I was stupid and told me all kinds of stuff. But I knew that, you know, they had to give it to me. And I just didn't want to – I didn't want to go in there and try to push my weight around or nothing like that. So – No. It's, it's, I've had people ask me, it's so weird that you're trying to do this for private research. And I'm like, some people build Legos for fun. I do private <laughs> research for fun. Right. And like, they're like, this, ju- this guy's just weird, but I legally have to give him this information. Right? Yeah. And no, yep. you legally, if you were going to do it to do some marketing, you still legally can get it. They're just going to be a lot more difficult with you on it. Yeah, and so you did it the right way. I think everyone watching this should do the right way. And you persevered. And now you got to do it for the water shut off. And oh, yeah. that no one else in your county is going to be able to get that list. So it's it's money, man. You know that. That's right. Yeah, my premium cash buyer, he don't even uh, – he's right here in the Ritter. And he works Lake Charles and Leesville, really. And uh, he, he's not even going after those. And, I mean, I haven't said nothing to him. But if they wasn't going to try to give it to me, then he, he likely is not going after it. That's it, man. Aaron, you're doing good, man. Aaron, if uh, you're, do- you're doing some good amount of deals. If someone's got a deal on Lake Charles, how do they send them to you? Uh, they could look me up on Facebook, uh, Aaron Armstrong. Uh, Are I you in wholesaling houses for real? Huh? You're in wholesaling houses for real? Yes. Yeah. I'm yeah. So uh, you just go to member, you search Aaron Armstrong, DM him, send him over a deal. You got, you got good buyers, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Do a JV deal with them, man. Make also, some money. Uh, also, I have a website. You can go to uh, enhancedpropertysolutions.us. And Put it in the comments, bro. Okay. Put the information <laughs> in there. The point is, man, like it, there's going to be someone like Charles Washington that can't sell a deal. You're legit. Boom. That's the point, right? We make, make a quick, quick 15K, you know, and I don't get right. paid off for that, but, you know, I'm just trying to help people out, you know? No, you put it not in the private chat. Put it in the public for everyone. Okay, I have to wait till I get off. I'm on my phone. Here, I'll post it on for you. All right. Okay. Like Charles. Ugh, like Charles. All right. Cool. Yeah, and I have a, uh, I have a few cash buyers that I just I I reached out to all the cash buyers up there in Shreveport. My mom and them they actually live up there, but uh. I haven't sent out no marketing or anything. I think I'm going to start doing maybe some vacant because uh, I never really messed around with Alexandria, but I sent out 219 uh, direct mails, which was the vacant high equity uh, about a month ago. And I've been getting calls nonstop from there. And we actually have a deal assigned over right now. We're waiting to close on and uh, uh, several more that, we, me and my wife, we went and looked at the other day, and uh, we're going to make offers on them tomorrow and uh, try to get those closed out. Awesome, man. Love it. Awesome, man. Any other questions? No, that's it, Zach. I appreciate right. it. I'll go after it. Do some deals with them. Let's, uh, let's make some money. Yes, sir. All right. Appreciate it. Boom. All right. Then uh, next year we got uh, Cairo. Yo. Hello. There you go. What's up, man? How can I help you out? Pretty good, man. Hey, I've been basically ingesting all of your content. Um, I did see that you you and your dad posted, like, places to do virtual. Um, but I wanted to do some places that you guys are JVing in. So I'm thinking of uh, somewhere in Florida because that's where my partner is. Um, just kind of curious, like, what markets would you uh, – kind of recommended Florida. I like Gainesville, Marion County. Um, Orlando's good. 
Mm. I mean, heck, you do Port St. Lucie if you want. It's a little saturated, but I mean, it's possible. And I would say the Panhandle, Pensacola, Florida, are probably be the best spots. And um, for these, if you're going to do a lot, of, like if you're going to do a ton, a ton, a ton, but I probably not starting out. Okay, so if I was just completely just starting out, where where would? Or are we talking about Panhandle? If you want me to choose one, I'd probably say Pensacola. Pensacola. Panhandle, Panama Beach, like that old region. I'd probably just do that. For sure, sounds good. And then um, if I am doing virtual, because I'm in LA, but he's he's over there in Port St. Lucie, but. Um, what lists would you recommend to go after first? Pro base? Government lists, bro. You, you already know this. All right, so. You already know this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's basically all the questions I got. I'm, I'm basically just starting, probably going to start pulling lists tomorrow. So um, online lists, would you do water shot offs, um, probates first? Like, which one would you go after first? <sighs> Let's do code violations and tax delinquencies. Okay, for sure. And I definitely want to stay accountable. How how many lists should I pull or like? Let's do those two first. Huh? Let's do those two first. Okay, for sure. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Those are my two questions right now. I'll uh I'll come back on Tuesday and see what uh, give you what I got. All right. Keep it up, Kyra. Oh, awesome. Appreciate it, guys. So remember, if you want to learn wholesaling real estate absolutely for free, make sure you go out here and clear your cookies, all right, and go to freewholesaling.com and learn how to wholesale real estate absolutely for free. Um, if you want to do some JV deals, uh, go to sellmypaper.com. Everyone, um, so if I'm not in your market for sellmypaper.com, I'll put it on the bottom here. Uh, you can send deals to everyone in Flipbook Plus. So we're letting everyone in Flipbook Plus, people that are doing deals uh, with us, or just you know paying the fee for it uh, to help host it. Yeah, you can go out here and sellmypaper.com can get connected to Flipbook Plus members, and you both can do deals. I don't make any money off of it. That's pretty cool. So if you're in, let's say for example, we're not doing deals in Pensacola right now, heck, you got a deal, send it to a Flipbook Plus member. They can reach out to you. And go from there. Clear cookies. Go to freelancing.com. I'll see you soon. This is Zach and signing out in Miami, Florida. Uh, I don't know if Rick's going to be on tomorrow. Uh, I know he has a prior engagement. We're trying to see how we can do it the right way. Uh, if not, he'll have a video posted, so don't worry about it. And he might do a bonus live stream on uh, Friday or something. But uh, yeah, he might not be on, but no big deal. We got all the videos. He'll post a video, so don't worry about it. And I'll see you guys soon. Go, go to freelancing.com. See you guys. Make sure you have a blessed one and uh, go to frilson.com. Appreciate you guys. Boom.